Good evening and welcome to our students, families, and friends. This is Syracuse University's new student convocation. Will the audience please rise for the academic procession? Leading this evening's academic procession are the school and college student marshals. They carry the banners that represent their home, college, or school. The marshals are seniors who are selected by their respective deans and faculty. They are processing in the order of which their school or college was founded. Leading the university's deans, faculty, staff, and chancellor's party is the mace bearer, John Palmer, Dean Emeritus of the Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs. Palmer carries the charter mace, which has been part of the university's commencement ceremony since 1959. The mace is an ancient symbol of authority, representing the university's integrity and mission. Following the Mace Bearer are the university's deans, David Seaman, Dean of Libraries, Robert Horadsky, Dean of Students, Peter Vanable, Dean of the Graduate School, David Van Slyke, Dean of the Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs, Karin Ruland, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, Michael Tick, Dean of the College of Visual and Performing Arts, Craig Boyce, Dean of the College of Law, Teresa Dahlberg, Dean of the College of Engineering and Computer Science. Joanna Massingella, Dean of the School of Education. 
Martha Garcia Murillo, Senior Associate Dean of the School of Information Studies. Jean Anderson, Dean of the Martin J. Whitman School of Management. Amy Faulkner, Senior Associate Dean of the SI Newhouse School of Public Communications. Michael Speaks, Dean of the School of Architecture. Diane Lydon Murphy, Dean of the David B. Fall College of Sport and Human Dynamics. Michael Fraschilio, Dean of University College. They are followed by the Chancellor's executive team. And next in the procession are the university's faculty and administrative staff. And they are followed by our distinguished Demeridi faculty. And finally, at the end of the procession are members of the Chancellor's Platform Party. They are led by University Marshals Shukai Chin and James Duajaman. Syracuse University Student Association President Gufran Sali. Dean of Hendricks Chapel Brian Conkle. Dean of Admissions Maurice Harris. Professor Jeffrey Mangrum, School of Education. Syracuse University Vice Chancellor and Provost Michelle Wheatley, and Syracuse University Chancellor and President Kent Siverud. And finally, at the end of the procession, Syracuse University's Color Guard. The Color Guard, now moving into place, is composed of members of the Army and Air Force Reserve Officers Training Corps at Syracuse University.
Chancellor Severud, by authorization of the Board of Trustees and the university faculty, I declare this new student convocation to be in session. Good evening, everyone. I am Michelle Wheatley, Vice Chancellor and Provost. Before we begin our program, I ask that you remain standing for the invocation, which will be given by the Reverend Dr. Brian Conkol, Dean of Hendricks Chapel. <clears throat> Please join me. We give thanks for being exactly where we are supposed to be. Here and now, at this place, in this moment, where all things are about to be made new. Here and now, where our minds are filled with curious wonder and a devotion for learning. Where our hearts are open to the power of habit and the art of possibility where resolve is shaped and sustained to do what is right and what is just. So here may our hearts and our minds be where we now are. And as new students commence their studies as global citizens in service to our common good, may the peace and the power that sustains us all be with them always. So today and always here and now, they may seek and be crowned with knowledge. This is our hope, O oh God. We do trust that it is your desire. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. Good afternoon. As Vice Chancellor and Provost at Syracuse University, I am delighted to welcome you, our new students and families, to Syracuse and to the start of what I know will be an exciting and rewarding academic journey here. As we convene today's convocation, I would like to acknowledge, with respect, the Onondaga Nation, the indigenous people, on whose ancestral lands Syracuse University now stands. <laughs> Students, today marks the official start of your academic career here at Syracuse University. I'm sure the last few days have been hectic for you, and I suspect many of you are feeling a little bit overwhelmed right now but I hope that on your arrival to campus, you received a warm welcome and a helping hand. More than 1,000 students, faculty, and staff volunteers have worked hard to prepare for your arrival and assist with settling you into your new campus home. I would like to take a moment now to recognize and thank them. I would ask those student volunteers to stand as a group when I call their names. The Goon Squad. Peer Advisors. International Connections Mentors. Resident Advisors.
orientation leaders. And all of our staff volunteers. I also want to thank all of the families and friends in attendance, parents and family members. We know this is a significant milestone for you as well as your student. Congratulations on a job well done in supporting your student, in nurturing their desire to continue their education, and in doing all you could to guide and prepare them for the academic journey ahead. And I want to assure you, as a university, we recognize the profound trust you are placing in us. We are honored to assume that trust, and I promise that your student will be in very capable and caring hands. Today, we welcome all of our new undergraduate, graduate, and transfer students to the university. Graduate students, your desire to pursue graduate studies attests to your passion for knowledge and commitment to scholarship. I hope it also inspires our undergraduates to consider advanced study for themselves one day. Together, you bring to the university a wide range of interests, expectations, and aspirations. But each one of you is now a part of the Syracuse University community. And your success during your time here and after is ultimately the measure of our success. So what can you expect from your Syracuse experience? You will be part of a vibrantly diverse community of scholars. Regardless of your interests or major, you will meet students from a wide range of backgrounds, cultural traditions, and belief systems. Students who bring multiple perspectives informed by their own experience to the classroom and to campus life. We treasure diversity because we believe it fosters intellectual and personal growth, empowers students of all walks of life to achieve their full potential, and prepares all of our students to thrive as citizens, professionals, and leaders in today's workplace and world. You will have a robust and multifaceted academic experience. One of the great strengths of Syracuse University is that our schools and colleges encompass the full spectrum of academic departments and professional studies. This depth and breadth of academic programs encourages and supports intellectual exploration, opportunities for hands-on learning, and cross-disciplinary collaboration. You will engage with the world from day one. Our students as a whole come from more than 100 countries and all 50 states. We also have a long legacy of promoting global study, and during your time here, you will have the opportunity to learn at one of the university-sponsored centers on three continents. You will have a dedicated network of support to ensure that you have the services you need to transition smoothly to university life and thrive throughout your time here. As part of this commitment this fall, we have launched a superlative new first year experience program for our new undergraduate students. The program is designed to foster community and connectedness, encourage self-reflection, and advance a climate of respect for all built around our shared values. And finally, during your time here, you will learn from faculty who are accomplished scholars and researchers and dedicated teachers and mentors. I would like to ask the faculty deans and members of the senior administrative staff to please stand now to be recognized. <clears throat> Students, each one of these individuals is invested in your success and ready to support you on your academic journey. I know right now you have an awful lot coming at you, but in the coming weeks and months, you'll find your own rhythm. As odd as it may seem now, let me assure you, your time here will go by very quickly. So make the most of it. Take advantage of all the university has to offer. Get involved in the wonderfully diverse community you're now part of. Befriend one another, learn from one another, and celebrate your differences 
as well as all that you discover you have in common. Do all that and you will reap the full benefits of a Syracuse University education. You will be better for it and so will we. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Gufran Sali, President of the Syracuse University Student Association. Hello, classes of 2022, 2023, and transfer students. On behalf of the Student Association, I would like to welcome you to the Orange family. You are now part of an amazing group of SU students, faculty, and staff. We have a vibrant and very involved community. Syracuse University has over 300 student organizations and clubs, not to mention countless opportunities to get involved in schools and colleges. Our students study all over the world, as well as in New York, DC, and LA. They have amazing internship opportunities and take classes with world-renowned faculty. I encourage you all to take every possible opportunity that comes your way. I would now like to introduce Syracuse University Chancellor and President, Kent Siverud. Good evening. On behalf of my colleagues on the faculty and staff, on behalf of more than a quarter million Orange alumni, I welcome all of you to Syracuse University. I will be followed in this welcome by Professor Jeffrey Mangrum of the Syracuse University School of Education. Professor Mangrum is a decorated teacher and scholar who is an expert on helping students succeed. He has worked hard to help lead the efforts of many at Syracuse to help you become orange. In acknowledging Professor Mangrum, I would also like to acknowledge and thank the many faculty, staff, and students who will this fall be facilitating the shared reading of Trevor Noah's book, Born a Crime. We have more than 400 students, faculty, and staff who have stepped up to this assignment and have been preparing all summer. I'd ask the faculty, staff, and students who've been involved in this great effort to wave or shout or stand or somehow call attention to yourself right now. They are here. We thank you. Incoming 2018 students, you've come here to be part of a great, engaged, thriving, diverse international research university. Syracuse is a lively and sprawling and dynamic and idiosyncratic place. It has a glorious, a complex history, a history in the sciences, in the arts, in the humanities, in the professions, in sports, in public affairs, in communications, in architecture, in education, in engineering, in law, in management, in information, and in veterans, and in serving humanity. I welcome all of you, more than 5,000 new students to Syracuse, first-year students, transfer students, master's students, professional students, doctoral students. You come from all over this nation and this world, from every state, from Puerto Rico, from Guam, from the Virgin Islands, from the District of Columbia, from more than 70 nations on six continents, as well as more than a dozen Native American nations. Every single one of you equally belongs here. As far as all of us are concerned, you are, uh, you are all now forever orange. You are going to hear a lot of speeches you're going to hear a lot of speeches this week and this semester. Good people are going to directly tell you what you should be doing. I want to speak to you instead about other forms of communication. Let me explain. My, my first office job was in Washington, D.C. in 1975. My boss was a master at communication that not only included words but deeds. He was originally from China and he somehow always paid attention to everyone in the place, 
even the youngest intern. He spoke to us even when he seemed to be addressing someone else or not speaking at all. For example, whenever he took a new employee around the office, my boss stopped to introduce every single person in the building. He carefully explained by name exactly why each employee was wonderful and was essential to the place. He appeared to be talking to the new employee, but both his words and his actions told each person, whether they were the janitor or the chief of staff, that they mattered and my boss knew exactly why. Entering students of 2018, more than ever before, you will need to become masters of these broader forms of communication. That is because in this wonderful and kaleidoscopic university, in this world, there are always multiple audiences present every time you communicate. In 2018, every time you speak, every time you use social media, every time you write, there will be all kinds of witnesses, not just the person you directly address. And that means every single time is an opportunity to show who you are, what you value, and what you mean. Not just through your words, but by how you relate to others, including friends, family, community, and the world. I want to quickly demonstrate this right now. Incoming 2018 students, there are at least three different audiences present right now. They are first you, the new students at Syracuse University. Second, they are the faculty and the staff and the upper level student leaders of the university who are interspersed all around you. And third, they are your parents and family and loved ones who are e either seated in the very hot upper decks or who are uh, or will watch this ceremony through the internet. I am going to speak directly first to the veteran faculty, staff, and returning student leaders, the people who already know this university, and then I'm going to speak to your family and loved ones. I want you new students to listen not for what I'm directly saying to them, but for what I am communicating to you. So first, to the faculty, to the staff, my colleagues, and to the returning student leaders, I wear a tie whenever I am with students. Communications experts and consultants in the last year have urged me to lose the tie. Uh, they want me to look more approachable and in tune with what they call the I generation. They tell me that people will be less afraid to talk with me if I look more like them. So why do I wear a tie? I will tell you, my colleagues on the faculty and staff, returning student leaders, I do not wear a tie so I can look like a nerd who longs for the 1950s. Ties are very uncomfortable and they constantly get dirty. I wear a tie because when I first started teaching, I had a professor colleague who wore blue jeans and made clear in every way he was just like his students, he was their friend. And then one day, a student came to my office in tears. The student had told my professor colleague during that student's first semester of school that he too hoped to be a professor someday. And my colleague in blue jeans said to that student, who was the first in his family to go to college, he said to that student that as a friend, he just needed to understand that professors needed to be intellectuals. And this student was just not intellectual material. That day, in the presence of that student in tears, I made two resolutions. First, I resolved that I was going to help that student become a professor with every ounce of my being, or I was going to die trying. And second, I resolved I was always going to wear an uncomfortable tie when I was on duty with students. The tie would be my daily personal reminder that I have moral responsibilities to my students beyond friendship, that I have a responsibility to always believe in my students, to always believe in my students even when they may not believe in themselves. By the way, my colleagues here today who are teachers and student leaders, about that student who was not intellectual material. Today he holds an endowed chair as a full professor at a great private university, a great private university that Syracuse is going to beat in basketball this season. <laughs> Now, 
I want to turn to the upper decks, to the family, the parents, the loved ones, and to those of you watching this by other means. Congratulations on getting to this day. Boy, do I remember what this day feels like as a parent. My wife, who's an engineering professor here with us today, and I have many times dropped one of our kids off at college. Parents and loved ones, I had mixed feelings every time I delivered a kid to college. I was happy that my kid was starting at a great university. I was proud. I was checking out the residence hall and the roommate and the food and the course schedule. I was smiling on the outside, listening to a lot of speeches and advice. But inside, I had a knot deep in my stomach. I wondered how I was going to adjust to having a piece of my soul, my kid, walking around a campus far away, beyond my ability to control or influence. My wife and my mother-in-law, my family and I, had poured so much into each one of our children. Time and love and energy and worry and inspiration. It was a labor of love, but it sure was labor, and we got very used to it. It defined the best part of our lives. And then suddenly there I was in this vast auditorium and some president in a robe was telling me to go home. I hated that president. Uh, he did not know my kid. He did not have a clue how much love and work and joy our whole family had poured into that kid to make attendance at a university possible. That president had not seen all the times that my kid had triumphed. That president had let not seen all the times that my kid had struggled, had been sick, had been in trouble, or had been just plain infuriating. That president did not seem to understand that our family was not just dropping off our kid in some abrupt divorce. Instead, we were embracing a transition while our uniquely constituted family remained intact, including with our kid in college. While well, parents, family, loved ones, relax. Cross off that worry. We know how much you have poured into your entering student. At Syracuse University, we know that you want to continue to be there for your kid who is now an adult. We know you want to be there in different ways that match the tremendous achievement of starting off one of your own at a great university. We know that because so many of us have been right there ourselves as parents and family members. Okay, now turning directly to the incoming class of 2018. What was I trying to convey to you while I was speaking to the faculty, to the staff, to the returning student leaders? And what broader communication was I trying to convey to you when I was speaking to your family, parents, and loved ones? Maybe what you heard when I was speaking to the faculty and staff and returning students was this. They should wear a tie, too. They should not wear jeans. They should all try to look like the current chancellor at Syracuse University. Wrong. People at Syracuse University are from all over the world. Each of us dresses and looks and communicates differently. Each of us has our own stories and our own reasons for how we present ourselves. I don't want people to look like me. Instead, what I was trying to tell you through the story of my student, I was trying to suggest that you don't know me because of how I look. You don't know my story. You don't even know why I wear a tie. Maybe, just maybe, everyone you meet here, including those who look or speak or learn differently than you, has their own story. And maybe no matter how different they look, they are here because they care about you. Please start out with that assumption. You will be amazed how often that is true here. Entering students, kind of what message was I trying to say to you when I was talking to your parents and family? Maybe you heard me saying that your family will now stop worrying about you now that you are with us in college at Syracuse. Fat chance. Trust me, they will all still worry. What I was trying to convey to you when I was speaking to your families was this. They sacrificed so much to get you here. That sacrifice is worth something. It is worth taking seriously this opportunity you have at a great university 
and it is certainly worth, I say as a parent, a phone call or text message occasionally to tell them how they are doing. Please remember that at Syracuse, when you speak, when you write, when you communicate, all audiences matter, and all in our Orange community have much to contribute. Remember that actions can speak loudly, even if indirectly, and can be a force to lift all of us up. To all audiences who are here today, to all of us who are now Orange, I say this. Today, we will hear these incoming students recite the charge that Chancellor Erastus Haven gave to our university almost 150 years ago. It is a charge that helps define what it means to be orange today as much as in 1871. As you participate in that charge, as that charge is accepted today, I want you to know that this university now belongs to these incoming students as much as to anyone else who is orange. These students will ask things here and build things here and prove things here and leave things behind here that are unique and enduring. To help this happen is our greatest responsibility. Welcome to Syracuse. Go Orange. Chancellor Severud, deans, faculty, staff, parents, guests, and most especially incoming undergraduate and graduate students and transfer students at Syracuse University, I would first like to thank you for inviting me here today to give the convocation address. Before I give my, my remarks, let's pause for a few seconds and take in the majesty of the moment. Think about it for a minute. Never in the history of the world will this group of people ever be together again. Never in the history of the world will there be a fall 2018 convocation. Join me in a moment of staying in the moment as we enjoy the embrace of the, present, the, the precious present. Let's do that now. Students, Welcome to Syracuse University. You've made it here. <laughs> awesome. But students, as you know, your journey is not over, nor did you get to this point in life alone. There has been a community to support and nurture you your family, friends, peers, throughout the years who've cheered you on. You have benefited from that community. You now will become a part of and contributor to the Syracuse University community. How will you positively enrich our beloved community? How will you contribute to our beloved community? And how will you positively shape our beloved community? I believe there are three ways in which you can enrich, contribute to, and shape the Syracuse University community. First, become interdependent rather than independent within the Syracuse University community. Interdependence is a state of mind. 
in which you learn to work with and depend on others to achieve a goal. Interdependence suggests that you have to build and sustain relationships with others, that you have to both compromise at times and be firm at times, that you have to listen genuinely before you speak, and that you have to stay connected to each other when there are varying and differing points of view or perspectives. Remember this key point regarding in interdependence. You can respect and understand another world view without having to agree with it. Let me say that again. You can respect and understand different world views without having to agree with them. Second, in order to enrich our beloved Syracuse University community, you have to cultivate empathy. Again, empathy is a state of mind in which you have the ability to share one else's feelings and perspectives and to use that understanding to guide your actions. Again, you, you understand someone else's experience and feelings, and then you use that to guide your actions. You are aware of and, and sensitive to another person's emotions. You attempt to experience those emotions as they are having them. Remember in the book, Born a Crime, Trevor Noah was given a stolen camera to sell. He looked at the pictures in the camera and realized that he had stolen someone's family memories, that he had stolen a part of someone's life. At that moment, he felt what the family must have been feeling, and he realized that stealing was wrong. Then and there, then and there, he began to change. That was an empathic moment for Trevor Noah. Empathic behavior towards someone leads to understanding and trust. Trust leads to vulnerability and vulnerability leads to honesty and authenticity. I cannot emphasize this value enough because empathy demands that you and I step outside of our experience in order to connect with another human being, which leads to deep and enduring relationships, friendships, and human connections. Lastly, students, in order to contribute positively to the beloved Syracuse University community, I hope you demonstrate responsibility for our community. Responsibility is a state of mind in which you hold yourself to account, to a set of standards. What are your standards? What will you demand of yourself in order to make Syracuse University better? Will you, will you seek friendships with people who do not look or act like you? Will you invite new people into your study group? Will you speak to someone who seems lonely? My hope and challenge is that you will. Welcome to the Syracuse University community, students. Remember, as you shape our beloved community, our community will shape you. The relationship is mutual and relational. Contribute to it by becoming interdependent rather than independent. Shape it positively by being empathic and be responsible within it. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Make friends and enjoy the experience for the next four years. I wish you well as you attempt to educate yourself in the beloved Syracuse University community. Thank you.
please, Gufran, would you please come back to the podium? Welcome. I'm sure you've all encountered this word countless times this week, and I promise you will only continue to hear it. And it is important to acknowledge that today and forevermore, we acknowledge that you have all joined the Orange family. But, oh, someone clapped. <laughs> but uh, family is never easy. I remember two years ago, I was here in the Carrier Dome with strangers from my residence hall. These strangers became my friends, dining hall companions, confidants, and even my sophomore year roommate. Two years ago, I was sitting at my new student convocation. I was scared, I was homesick, I was confused, and very, very sweaty. I'm sure most of you are too. But there are a few things people don't tell you about college, like how it's perfectly acceptable to walk up to someone who may be different from you and introduce yourself. Hello can go a really long way. That it's okay to eat in the dining hall alone sometimes. And that courage can come from some of the most unexpected places. As you just heard from the chancellor, our first year students had the opportunity to participate in a new shared reading program where they were given a book to discuss in small sections. I also had the opportunity to read this amazing book. Trevor Noah's Born a Crime teaches us to accept failure as a part of life instead of viewing it as a hindering roadblock. Your arrival at Syracuse University marks the beginning of a beautiful process of growth, one where mistakes will be made and the heartbreak of receiving a C in your introductory class will be all but a distant memory. I know that because I went through it, and here I am delivering this address to you, someone who learned from her mistakes and used it to propel her SU experience. While these speed bumps are a part of you, they do not define you. Remember that you were all chosen to be here for a reason. It could be your talents in academics, sports, music, art, technology, communication, business, and so many more intersections of those things. One of my favorite quotes from Born a Crime is, we spend so much time being afraid of failure, afraid of rejection, but regret is the thing that we should fear most. Failure is an answer. Rejection is an answer. Re regret is an eternal question you will never have the answer to. I could have easily dropped the class I was struggling in because I was failing. But if I had quit, I would have never known what I needed to do better the next time I was having a hard time. Syracuse has taught me to survive these minor disappointments and wear them proudly because they contribute to my journey of self-discovery. My failures, my rejections, and my successes are what I use to bring me where I am today. And I will forever be grateful to the Orange community for that. But don't just take my word for it. It is my great honor to announce that Trevor Noah will be our speaker at our annual Martin Luther King Jr. celebration in January. First years, on behalf of all of the students of Syracuse University and from a friend, welcome home. We are so happy to have you. Thank you. And now I would like to ask Chancellor Severud and Dean Maurice Harris to come to the podium.
Chancellor Severu, it is my honor to present to you our incoming undergraduate class of students to receive your charge. Will all new undergraduate students please rise if you are able and remain standing for the Chancellor's charge. Once the Chancellor has read his charge, please respond together in unison. You will find the response written in your program. From a speech by Erastus Haven, Chancellor of Syracuse University on September 14, 1871. I charge you to embrace your part in a great university. A university is a place of genuine life and of patient, disciplined thought. It is a place where muscles must be trained, inventions must be created, sciences, arts, and religion must be mastered, and the conscience must be enlightened. At this university, there must be study and thought without limit and without end. Other schools have a narrow curriculum. At Syracuse University, we assign to you a definite beginning, but we direct you to no one end. Somewhere along the way, at Syracuse University, you will become the teachers, and the teachers will learn from you. Original study and imagination will never cease. Like all great humane institutions, your university will be constantly changing and will never be complete. Yet we will always enable every one of you to increase your learning, your ability, and your success. I charge you to thrive here, to learn here, to teach here, to make lifelong friends here, and to seek knowledge without end. We hereby accept your charge to work hard, thrive, and seek knowledge without end. Thank you. Okay, classes of 2022, 2023, and transfer students. You can stay standing if you are able. We have one more request for you. At Syracuse University, we have a variety of traditions, and I hope in your time here, they will have just as much meaning to you as they do to me. One of the first traditions you will take part in is singing the alma mater, which we will get to shortly. After the program, we invite undergraduate students and families, families to join us for dinner on the football field. For our graduate students, the Graduate Student Organization invites you to join them for a welcome picnic at the Incomplete. And now, I'd like for everyone else to please rise, if you are able, for the singing of our alma mater.
New students, you are now part of the Orange family. On behalf of Chancellor Severud, your deans, faculty and administration, I wish you all the best and great success as you begin your Orange career. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will conclude our program today with the academic recessional. Please remain in the stands until the members of the recession clear the floor. Thank you.